So I'm going to do this part as a voiceover and you know I talk about this recipe all the time. I have shared it but it has been a while so I'm going to give you the rundown. It is very important when making this that you do press your tofu first. You really got to get that moisture out of there. Now I use my air fryer for the poblano peppers and the onions and I do it for about 20 minutes or so give or take 400 degrees and let them char up and then I also put some cloves of garlic in there as well but not till like towards the end just so they don't burn. While those cook up you also saw me put the tofu cubed up in a pan also going to brown that up which will also get any excess moisture that might be there. Now we're going to start with the base of the sauce. I could do this in my sleep. I really could. Now again I do have it linked below um, with like more exact measurements but I'm going to tell you you can give a take with this. I just you see me eyeball it. Olive oil apple cider vinegar. You could also use white wine vinegar too. And what I'm using here is that chipotle and adobo sauce. And I had a little leftover from the last time. It comes in a can though. And I do about two of the actual chipotle peppers and a little extra sauce, but that is definitely where the heat comes from. So you might want to play with that a little bit. I do a full can of tomato paste as well because I love the richness of it. And then soy sauce too. And that's what gets the saltiness in it. There's actually no seasonings in this sauce, which is kind of crazy. I think it's my only recipe like that. Then I use coconut sugar to sweeten it up, tone down a little bit of the chipotle peppers, and then some water. And then we just wait for our peppers to be done out of the air fryer. Then we'll add that to it. Now you'll see the tofu is browned up, looks good. And I like to use a pastry cutter. I think it works great to then crumble it. This makes such a difference and it's very different than like a scramble, you know? So I highly recommend using a pastry cutter to do this. And again, if the moisture is out of there, then you're not going to have any problems making it a true crumble. So once your onions, peppers, and garlic are done, you can just throw the onions right in there and the garlic. And then what I like to do with the poblanos is actually take the skin off of them as much as I can. You don't have to get like every single little piece. It's totally fine if you miss some but this will really, really help when you go to blend it all up and make the sauce so creamy. It, it's so good. Now I will say poblano peppers, I love them. They're like my favorite for this. I have used Anaheim chili peppers. They're not as smoky, but they are pretty similar in heat as far as like, I would say like a medium heat. Now with that said too, you can take out the veins and seeds in these, which you'll see I basically do maybe leave a couple here and there when Nate's not looking. And uh, this will also help keep the heat not too, too spicy. Again, you know that Nate is not a huge fan of spicy things, but he loves this meal. He does. What I would definitely recommend when you go to like make this with your full dish is some uh, uh, tofuti sour cream on top. It really helps like cool it all down too. I was out this week and we still enjoyed it, but just saying. So throw those peppers in there and then you're going to blend, blend, blend. If you do not have a high speed blender, I highly recommend you get one. It makes the world of difference, my friends. I love my Vitamix. I've had it for years and years now and it would be really hard for me to give it up. That's for sure. So once it is so creamy, you're on the home stretch now, add it to your tofu crumble. And the last two ingredients in this is coconut milk. I love this brand from Costco. It is so delicious, so thick and creamy. And then a can of tomato sauce. Now on my listed recipe, I say that you should add like little bits of each of those in the can at a time, then let it kind of reduce. But you know, over the time, I found it that it's just fine to do the whole can of each at once and be fine with that too. It's still delicious. <laughs> you know my patience. Say hi to the dog. Yes. And uh, you're going to be putting this together and you're going to be like, oh, I don't know. The color's a little weird. Is this right? Just trust the process, my friends. I promise it is right. Let it simmer. 
it's i swear the color just like develops in richness let it go on a low low simmer delicious and now look oh my goodness this was probably like 25 minutes that's all it takes and we love to make this as a meal prep too because we can have it with burritos, tacos, or just like this. And that is how we have it majority of the time. You really can't beat it. It's delicious. I highly recommend you try it. It goes a long way. Did we have a good walk? We did. Oh, good. I am gonna have some overnight oats. We did, we did a good walk. Where are we at? Let's see. Not even 8.30 and we're already there. Come on now. <laughs> but uh, I made these yesterday. It's one scoop of protein, just the chocolate protein. And then a handful of slivered almonds, half cup of oats, soy milk, little vanilla extract, and a little cinnamon. And that, oh, and chia seeds. That's what makes it goopy, which I would just always thought I would hate. And I like love it now when it's cold. It's very strange, but I am gonna munch on this. Doesn't that look yummy? I have some leftover uh, baked potato. Look at that juicy one uh, from last night. I baked all four, so we have a little bit left over. I put some right here. And I'm just having myself a big, big salad. Uh, no fake out meats or anything in it. I get pretty much the source of protein in this too from the edamame and peas, which I love in salads. I do. So I have a ton in there, probably a good cup between both. And then my friends, I just got back from Trader Joe's sharing that with you. That's already up. I had to do it. I just had to. They're so good. <laughs> I did carrots, mixed greens, sunflower seeds, a little bit of onion crispies. I probably should have just, you know, done the onion crispies, not the croutons, or just the croutons, not the onion crispies, but that's not me. So we did both. And uh, I'm just saying. Olives, what do we got here? And a little bit of green onion. Very, very simple. Very, very good. I'm going to put some pepper on it too. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of this. Very good. And then again, because no meal is complete without it, maybe some chips. And this, my friends, got it at Smith's. This is so delicious. Oh my goodness. So good. I had some yesterday with my sandwich. I know it's not a looker, but best believe it is delicious. Oh my goodness. I just put a little bit, like you see there, in a little container and then heated it up for like 15 seconds. That was it. And just to kind of make it a little bit more creamy and it was just perfect. Very, very good. I would absolutely get that again, but that is lunch. So tonight is the next round of playoff games for hockey and we were thinking nachos, but I had this idea and we're going to see how this goes. And instead of chips, because you know I already had some, don't tell, but um, I was thinking we could make zucchini chips. Nate's like, I don't know about that. I'm, I don't know either, but I think it could work. So I sliced them pretty thin and put it on a paper towel and then do the top two and kind of get that excess moisture out. And then I'm gonna put some salt on them, which will also draw some out. I can do a little pepper too. I wanna to keep it pretty simple though because of all the toppings we're gonna to probably put on top of course and bake them for like, well, we'll spray them with some um, like avocado oil and bake them for like 15 minutes and then maybe flip them, we'll see. And then like another 15 minutes, kind of keep an eye on it. They should come out really, really crispy though. That's what I'm thinking. And then we just load them up with like all the things that we have in the fridge because anything can be nachos. I'll keep you posted. So that is four zucchini in total, basically two full sheet pans. 
and we'll just see how this goes. I'm gonna pop it in the oven. I have it set to 425. If you want them crispy, you want them burnt, if you will, but not burnt in a gross way, right? <laughs> so we'll see if we can make these little chips. Okay, so I just pulled out one of them and I'm gonna totally burn myself. Let's be smart about this. A little tedious. I'm gonna do like 20 more minutes. Yeah, because they're super soft and that's not what I want. But they're definitely cooked. This little flip here. Oh, you know I don't have patience for this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And then like let them cool where they should crisp up when they're done. You know what I mean? That was a terrible angle, I'm sorry. And see, here's my rule of thumb too. I do this a lot with rice, in fact, and it's not to say that any food is bad, not at all, but you can still use real chips too. But instead of using as many, you do something like this as well. And that's what I do with rice a lot of the times too. I will usually add like cauliflower into it, like the minced up kind or diced up, and it just bulks it up, but the whole thing then isn't technically all rice. It's just something I do, but you do you. Oh, I am losing patience. I don't even know if you really have to flip them. I don't know, but I figured, can't hurt. See, some of these, I think I cut them a little bit more thin. Like, I don't know if that one's gonna like taste good, but it could be just right. In fact, I'm gonna have to watch this one a little bit more because it's definitely cooking a little bit quicker. Okay, I'm gonna put the other one on the bottom and this one on top. We're learning. They smell good, I love zucchini. The thing is, if it's a bust, I'll still eat it like this. <laughs> So I pulled this one out because it definitely looks done to me or it's gonna go too bad, but I'm gonna let them cool and then we're gonna see if they're like crispy like a chip. We will see, but the other one needs a little more time. This has only been in total uh, 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 to 33 minutes. How does that work out? <laughs> uh, I love wearing the weight vest because it reminds me of how much I used to weigh because it's like, <laughs> 40 or 50 pounds, which I used to weigh more than that. Yep. And then go running with that thing. Oh. I decided to do sprints and jumping jacks. So I sprint halfway down the play thing. I kept my heart rate at like 170 for like Ew. 10 minutes. And then I got real throw up y and I walked home. <laughs> I went, I'm going home. <laughs> I did that, I did that. I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the nasty burps and everything. Oh. So give them a chance to cool. No, you know, can't. Oh, well. <laughs> but. I'm gonna make nachos with chips. I understand, they but. They taste good. But listen, hold on. They started to even like rattle like chips. What if you baked them twice? I did. What if you break them a third time? No, because I don't want them to burn. But I, here's my thoughts they just need to cool. But you can hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we need them to cool, because when they cool, they'll harden up. It's like cookies. They do taste really good. Do they? But see, I told them, we can do these and chips, and then it's just kind of bulking something, yeah. see? You do yours like that, and I'll do mine with chips. <laughs> and... Did you, show them? Did, did you show them the bar spoon? Look at your bar spoon. It's obnoxious. And why do they have the little curl things on their bear? Mm, it helps for fizzy carbonated drinks to pour down smoothly into your cocktail. Oh my God. I have a little bit of this left. We'll throw that on. Black beans. I love cabbage for the crunch. This is freaking bomb. Oh, is it? It's so good. Now I would say it's a little, probably a little bit better cold or warm, but it's so good. Oh, Doesn't... I'm glad you waited for me. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> over the last few days. It's so good. It, I know. It's so good. So we'll use that. Got some olives. We'll use our pico. And then I was thinking a drizzle of this. 
on top when it's done. Kind of mimic like sour cream, but also like flavored. Come on now, friend. if I've officially said hello on here to you. Hello. So then we do all the toppings, which is like the best part. It really is. I have here the hot and sweet jalapenos. I put them separate because Nate doesn't dig them. They're so good from Trader Joe's. Got some avocado, bunch of cabbage, and we'll use up the rest of this corn salsa. I still have some pico left. And then, I always feel like I'm forgetting something rest of these olives why not put whatever you want on top but yeah we'll put some of this on top I think it'll be really really good Slop it in, baby. Thank you. Okay. I'm taking some of that avocado. You're taking the whole avocado. <laughs> <laughs> I know my truth. Put this and then one of these. Look at that. <laughs> I'm super cool with that. That's good. Those sauces on there are real nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. What's the pink sauce? Pink? That, mm. that one. Queso. The hatch queso, but yeah. it's cashew based. Oh, the one that was cold that I... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're getting more of that, right? Where'd yeah. you get it? Smith's. Getting more of that. Well. Yeah. Nachos, my favorite food ever. That's good. That's real good. Good job, Mary. Can't talk. Eating. No, okay, what are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't enjoy the fruits of life
So final day, happy Cinco de Mayo. I did my overnight oats again, it never fails. Delicious. And then again, I'm a creature of habit. I am an hour back to pace. <laughs> But these almonds that I recently showed on the last like new items from Trader Joe's, oh my goodness, my friends, they are so good. So since it was Cinco de Mayo, I wanted these taquitos. I have not had them in so, so long. If you have not tried these, they are wonderful. They're not the best for you, but they are quite delicious. Now, I'm not 100% sure all the places that they are sold at, but we find them at Sprouts and again, Try them out once, my friends. They are very, very good. Now, since it was Cinco de Mayo, we decided we'll have ourselves a little cocktail. This is a new one for me, my friends, and it may sound so boring, but I actually saw it going around online, and I was like, I want to try that. And it's kind of like a, a margarita take, but not, and it's not as sweet because of the way that I like it. But let me share this with you. You take some clementine tequila or orange flavored tequila, a little splash of orange juice, and of course some ice, and then take the tangerine LaCroix. Who would have thought? Now, if you do want a little bit more closer to a true margarita and a little bit more sweetness to it, put a little bit of agave syrup as well. But I actually prefer it with just these three ingredients. Delicious, my friends. So good, so refreshing. I would recommend it. Try it out. You never know. Now, Nate made himself a more traditional margarita and used a Reposado tequila, a full lime, and then also used a little bit of triple sec and Cointreau, if I'm saying that right. This is definitely a more traditional take, of course, on a margarita, but everyone has their own little method, that's for sure. And then when you go to like a restaurant and stuff and you wanna order it like Cadillac style, it means two things, basically. Again, depending on where you go, but basically uh, it means that you are using a top shelf tequila as your base and then also floating the drink with like a, a Grand Marnier on top. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is something you can do as well. You can do it from home. Take your ice molds and shake it up. By the way, it just totally just stuck out to me right now. I saw like a reel on Instagram that apparently some grocery stores now are selling like ice molds already like done for you. And they're like $12 for like six little ice ball molds. I'm like, no, no, no. Get your molds, make them yourself. You'll be fine. <laughs> Anyway, but that is his classic margarita right there. So now back to our taquitos that are almost done. And uh, I love beans. I do. Do you like refried beans? I love them. I do. A lot of people don't. I love any bean. I really do. <laughs> so we're just making this little tray to share. And I thought we could do some beans on the side as a dip as well. And by the way, this feta style block cheese, very, very good very good and it kind of mimicked even like that cotija cheese on top kind of drawing a blank at where i got this i've actually had it a while and it has a really good shelf life and i want to say whole foods though i believe day of cheese in general it, when the beginning it just wasn't the best but they have definitely reformulated and it's much much better yes more of my jalapenos they're so delicious they really are the description of them being hot and sweet is like spot on. They really are a good little spice, but also sweet. I love them. So again, these taquitos, have you had them? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Very, very good. Cut them in half. Makes it feel like you're getting more, you know. <laughs> These are actually the beef ones, and then the other one is the chicken, and you can tell it's like a lighter color. I honestly don't even really have a favorite between the two. I guess I would say the beef one has a little bit more flavor, but again, they're both really, really good. Anyway, my friends, that is going to wrap up the week. I hope this just gave you guys a little bit of ideas, some meal inspiration in the kitchen. Keep it simple. Keep it repetitive, nothing wrong with that too, but also try new things here and there and see if you find some new favorites. That's what it's about. Hope you guys have a great, great day. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye guys.